الحمد للہ و صلاۃ وسلام علیہ نبی اللہ محمد وعلیٰ علیہ وصحبہ وسلم اما بحب اللہ کنٹینیو آن رسطری صورۃ الفاتحہ تفسیر امام سعدی رحیم اللہ تعالی این وی لفٹ آف امام سعدی رحیم اللہ تعالی و سینگ آفٹر اللہ تبارک تعالیٰ سے کتاب الکریم احدن صراط مستقیم گائڈ اس ٹو دی اسٹریٹ پیتھ این ہیر اللہ سبحانہ تعالیٰ از گیونگ اے کمانڈ And we've mentioned countless times one of the qawaid, one of the principles in, uh, in uh, asul, asul al-fiqh, is that uh, al-amr, when we have a command, al-amr yafidu wujub, that when there's a command in the sharia, a mu'min, the asl of that command or the origin of that command is that it, is in, it means it's an obligation. It also means it's an act of worship. If Allah commands you to do something, then that means it's an act of worship. It's, an, it's, called, it's considered ibadah. Because ibadah, as we talked about already prior, uh, as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, Al-ibadatu ism jami' li kulli ma yuhibbuhu Allah wa yaradah min a'mal al-zahir wa batin. That ibadah includes everything. It's a comprehensive term that includes everything that Allah loves and is pleased with from, de- from actions which are open and hidden. Meaning, those actions which are open, for ex- example, salat, paying zakat openly, uh, what, and, you know, many acts that are, that are acts that are dhahir, that you can see. Uh, acts that are uh, hidden, if you will, are internal acts of ibadah, like your intention. No one can judge it. Oh yeah, his intention is good. Oh, his intention is evil. People can make guesses and they can guess from your, uh, from other actions, but ultimately they cannot judge what's in your heart and what's taking place in your heart. No one uh, can cut your heart open and say, oh yeah, he's a hypocrite because he, he said this or such and such and such and such about him. No. Oh, he, o- he only has 20% tawakal. You, you can't judge those things. You can't quantify those things because those are uh, ibadat qalbiyah. Those are, uh, that, that is worship which is in the heart. Tawakul, tawassal, uh, you know, the, the niya, uh, ikhlas, things like this. This is all, uh, this relates to things that you can't see openly. So all of these are acts of ibadah. And going back to what we were saying, that here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded something in an amr yufidul wujub, a mu'min, in general. Unless there's other text to show that it is no longer an obligation, that it is uh, something that is recommended, or so on and so forth. And that has to do with usul of fiqh. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, guide us to the straight path. Imam Sa'di says, that is, show us and help us to follow the straight path. Which is the clear path that leads to Allah and to His, his paradise. Which in turn means knowing the truth and acting upon it. Uh, so here you're supplicating for guidance. Supplicating to who? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For what? For hidayah, for guidance. To do what? To worship Him and Him alone. You're asking for guidance from Allah to worship Allah. So you're asking for His assistance even in that because we're humble, I mean, we're frail creatures. We need Allah for everything. Tabarak wa ta'ala. May Allah forgive us of our many sins in which we are not cognizant of him and we continue to commit sins Wallahu musta'an so he says uh, this is a prayer for guidance to the straight path and guidance when following the path guidance to the straight path means adhering to the religion of Islam and forsaking all other religions guidance when following the path includes guidance concerning all the details of the religion in knowledge an action. Look at that. That's Hidayah. Because when you look at it, these simple principles here, which Imam Sa'di is emphasizing and showing us from Surah Al-Fatiha, mostly, all the Muslims recite Surah Al-Fatiha. But how many of the Muslims take guidance from other than the book and the Sunnah? How many Muslims are people who have the name as, uh, as Muslims, but they say they take their, their religion from Bob Marley? Don't think it's a joke. Or Bob Dylan. 
or others. This is what the so-called progressive Muslims. How many people even goes to the extent of describing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ways, in means, that they have no authority to do so, no right to do so, no text, no divine text to support what they believe. They describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a she. They describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ways unknown to mankind based upon their whims, based upon their desires. So it shows the importance of Hidayah and it shows us the importance of Elm, of knowledge. And it's a, it shows us the importance of Elm as Sahih, that uh, correct sound knowledge which comes from the book and the Sunnah. It doesn't come from our whims. We know the meanings of this only from study. We can't, you know. These things are not just intuitive that we're going to know many of the things in the religion of, of Islam. How do we know about these, these issues in the ghaib? You know, about the malaika, about uh, Yom al Qiyamah. We know this from the divine text, and that comes from studying the text. And then we believe in it. Because those are the sifat of mu'mineen. As Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says in Kitab al Kareem, Alif Lam Bada or Aud the Billah Mini Shaitan or Rajim, Alif Lam Meem, Abismillah Rahman Rahim, Alif Lam Meem, Valik al Kitab al Araiba Fi, Hudin Lil Muttaqeen, Aladina Yuk Minuna Bil Raibi, Wa Yukimuna Salat, Wa Mimma Razakana Hum Yun Fikum. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says after Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Alif Lam Meem. This is a book in which contains no doubt. Here we're talking about the Quran. Hudin lil muttaqin, guidance for the muttaqin, guidance for those who are pious, those who want to accept the truth. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to describe the muttaqin, the pious ones, sifat al mu'minin, the, the characteristics of the believers, the characteristics of those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. Hudin lil muttaqin, alladina yu'minuna bil ghayb, those who believe in the unseen. Those are the mu'mineen. That's a characteristic of the believers. Is they believe in the unseen. We haven't seen it. We haven't seen Yom Al-Qiyamah. We haven't seen Adab Al-Qabr. We haven't seen Al-Barzak. We haven't seen all these things. A Jannah. When Nar, we never, we haven't seen it. But we believe in it. We believe in it. This knowledge of the unseen. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it fi kitabihi in his book. And his messenger alayhi salatu wasalam mentioned it on his tongue. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So we believe in it. That's a sifat of the mu'mineen. And so that shows us all these things are not according to our whims. We don't just guess and speculate about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't guess and speculate about the religion of Islam. We study. We have to study and gain ilm al nafia beneficial knowledge. May Allah bless us with ilm al nafia ruskin tayyibu amal al mutaqabbilin. Ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. And then he says, Guidance to the straight path means adhering to the religion of Islam and forsaking all other religions. Guidance when following the path includes guidance concerning all the details of religion in knowledge and action. This supplication is one of the, uh, of the most concise, comprehensive, and beneficial of supplications. SubhanAllah. You want to know supplications that are a bit mufid? It's right there. It's in the Quran. And Surah Al-Fatiha. That's why having khushur, having that uh, humility when praying and reflecting on its meaning. That's why we study this tafsir. That's why, you know, it's to remind us and it's to make us conscious so that the next time you recite Fatiha, you know it's just not just some words you're mumbling, but to be conscious. And to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And remember, if nothing else, some benefit to where you can reflect and where you can focus and where you can really pour your heart into worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala basira with insight and fiqh and knowledge and understanding. So he says, this supplication is one of the most concise, comprehensive, and beneficial of supplication. Hence, it is obligatory to call upon Allah with it in every rakah of the prayer because we are in need of that. We're in need of that reminder, but you got to also remember that and be conscious of it. Every time you're, you're every rakah, when you're reciting Surah Al-Fatihah, be conscious of its meaning, and that you are actually It's you alone who we worship, and it's you alone 
who we seek help. So seek that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.